Hello, for today's video, I'm going to be talking about the Mexican miracle for assignment 11. So besides the other options, military, the elites, the middle classes, labor, rural Mexicans, women, Indians, I'm going to be talking about what the actual Mexican miracle was. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the military um, and the economic issues in the economy. So the Mexican miracle was a Mexican miracle, perhaps you say ironic as that is. The reason why they call it this is because it was a economical growth for Mexico that was a sacrifice that needed to happen. So as we know the Mexican Revolution happened and um, also we know the US went to war and Mexico was sending money and um, becoming one of the allies um, helping the US. So the US was benefiting from this because they were using our materials and in exchange for the materials, we were getting money. Money makes the world go around if you don't know. I'm looking at this so I have some notes on what I'm gonna say. So, we all know the party was founded um, by Plutarco Elias Calles in the wake of presidency and the assassination in 1928, um, we changed Alvaro Obregón's assassination to the Institutional Revolutionary Party. So we had a whole bunch of people, Miguel Aleman Valdez, Francisco Almodero. Um, there was also other elections. But during the presidency of Lazaro Cárdenas, um, there was impacts on future economic policies in Mexico. Um, a lot of what it was is the nationalism of oil. So oil production was a big thing, and oil production was almost like an exchange of money. Um, oil was needed, railroads were needed, it was just a whole bunch of things. Um, also, uh, we obviously know who Lazaro Carden Cardenas is. Um, he included the future economic policies in Mexico of nationalism of oil in 1938, land reform, Nationalism, nationalization of railways, railways. So you know how the saying, road, um, how the saying, the rails, um, well, the railways. As you can say, so Cardenas was pretty much successful politically, uh, because he had made more moderate, um. Then Manuel Avila Camacho, who wanted a program of industrialization in the early 1941. The law of manufacturing industries, because they wanted to manufacture and they wanted production, production equaled money, production equal a cycle. Uh, Mexico benefited significantly during the World War II by its participation in the side of the Allies. Mexico supplied labor to the U.S. via the Barcero program. Barcero program, we're saying, was funded and created. Um, so its most funding came from the supplements of the war. So what they were supplying for the war, that's how they were getting money. Um, Avila Camacho used part of the accumulated savings to pay off the debt that they had for uh, foreign debts so that Mexico's credit standing, st standing approved improved 
Um, so they needed to do that so they could have better money. Um, growth was sustained by the government's increasing commitment to primary education for the general population from the late 1920s through the 1940s. The rate of the country's youth increased during this period of time. Uh, Mexico was also investing in higher education. They wanted to better themselves. They were investing in programs, industrialization, supplements, um, education. They just wanted a generation of scientists, social scientists, engineers, who would enable a Mexican industrialization and innovation. So the founding of it is the Instituto Politico Nacional in 1936 um, in new part of Mexico City. Um, And it just basically trained a generation of Mexicans in northern Mexico, the Monterey Institute of Technology and Higher Education. Um, So we can see overall how everything was ranging from beginning to 1970s, um, how they had that economical growth go up and down like a roller coaster, what they had to do in order to have a more successful rate in their economical growth. Um, military had a lot to do with that because they were in the war and what was happening in the war, what they were attributing to the war was increasing their economically and developments in education and economically. Mexico's strong economic performance continued in the 1960s when it went from 7% overall, about 3% per capita. Consumer price inflation increased, averaged only 3% annually. Manufacturing remained the country's dominant growth social sector, expanding 7% annually and attracting considerable foreign investment. Mining was a part of it too. It grew at an annual rate of nearly 4%, trade at 6%, and agriculture by 3%. So they were seeing better results um, annually, and they were just going by their algorithm. By 1970, Mexico had diversified its export base and become largely self-sufficient in food crops, steel, consumer goods, agriculture, all of it. Although its imports remained high, most were capital goods and used to expand domestic production. So as you can see, Mexico had a revolution, not just war, um, but economically. So they went from zero to 100. Um, They had to grow. Obviously, now Mexico depends what part you're talking about, but it's not the greatest of all time, but throughout history, they have definitely had a development of growth. Thank you.